Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk, where three best selling authors talk all things bookish with you for 10 short and sweet minutes. Today, mm -hmm. I am super excited because we have none less than Melanie Benjamin, who has written a fabulous, fascinating new novel, California Golden. I am loving this book. It is, it's got all the things, but you know what? Enough about me. Melanie, tell us a little bit about your wonderful new book, California Golden. Well, first, thanks for inviting me. It's so great to see you all. Um, California Golden is set in the 1950s, sunny California. And Carol Donnelly is a housewife who would rather be Gidget than Donna Reed. And she mm -hmm. actually becomes an iconic female surfer during a time when women were not really welcome on the waves. But in doing so, she frequently abandons and neglects her two young daughters. So they come up with a plan that they're going to learn how to surf in order to try to keep up with their mother and not be left behind. And the oldest daughter, Mindy, is a natural. She is, you know, actually eventually um, surpasses her mother and she becomes a minor celebrity in those beach party movies. But the younger daughter, Ginger, can't keep up and she gets sucked down into the counterculture of the 60s, drugs and cults. And it is the daughter's or the sister's journey back to each other against the psychedelic backdrop of the 1960s that forms the heart of the novel mm, good yeah. stuff such Thank good you. stuff so th there's so many fascinating things about this novel but I, at the heart of it it's about these three women in a family and i am so curious um how did you come up with the idea of having three with female surfers in a family that seems super unusual particularly at the time yeah, and it was. Um, you know, when I was thinking about what to write next, um, and in, uh, I, m my first six historical novels were all biographical historical fiction and that they were based on real people. But I was feeling that that market was getting way too tight, and maybe a little tired. And so my last novel, The Children's Blizzard, I went in a different direction, inventing um, people based on some research uh, surrounding a real event. And I wanted to do the same thing with California Golden, but I was seizing more on a cultural moment than one historical event. And I thought the 1960s California Beach Boys, California Girls, that seemed really kind of fun and, and exciting and that surfing world. So I just started doing some research and learned a lot about some pioneering female surfers um, who were not welcome you know, by the male surfers at that time. And then I found a photograph of a real woman, her name is Marge Calhoun. Today, she's remembered as the first world champion female surfer. And it was a photo of Marge and her two daughters. And they were also competitive surfers. And it was a glorious photo of these three beautiful blonde California girls standing there with their surfboards smiling in the sun. And I thought, well, wow, that is fascinating. And while this story is not about Marge Calhoun or her daughters, but they were my very loose inspiration, this idea. And it, you know, made me wonder all sorts of things about the complexities of their family relationship. You know, did the girls want to learn how to surf? Was it kind of forced upon them by their mother? I mean, what was, how did they compete together? How was that? So that just got me started in thinking about um, families. And Marge Calhoun did indeed go on a surfing safari in Hawaii in, I believe it was 55 which my character Carol does as well. And in doing so, she left her two daughters for several months at home. And that's all I know about her thing. But to me, that was kind of like the springboard of, well, how do the girls feel about that? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where the book kind of starts. Right. And you do, you know, think about, oh, early 60s, Beach Boys, beach parties, fun. But there's definitely another side to the 60s. And you illuminate that really beautifully. There's so many themes in this book that are, are really important and feel really very relevant in today's um, times. Materialism, mm -hmm. racism, cultural appropriation, sexism. There is not time in a 10 minute book talk for us to unpack all of that. But as I'm reading, I really felt that like, complicated family relationships driven by a sense of abandonment are kind of at the root of everything. So can you speak a little bit more to that and how it is it drives the story? Well, yeah, I mean, I was really kind of fascinated with the idea of women in the 1950s, Carol, and we're talking about the mother. She, she's a bad mother. I mean, a nightmare of a mother, a disaster of a wife. She should never have been either of those, of those things, right. but that simply wasn't an option. 
you know, she she uh, came of age in the 40s. She was a female athlete, which I thought was really interesting to explore that. We don't see that a lot in books about athletes of that time period, female athletes, and how, you know, there were no, <laughs> no venues for that beyond high school sports, really, unless you were a tennis player or a figure skater. And Carol wanted to be a ball player. And um, you know, I mean, it's not a spoiler. She gets pregnant. And what do you do when you're pregnant in 1945? Well, you marry the guy, he goes off to war, and then you are stuck. And this is not the life you wanted. And so I really, really wanted to explore that uh, an iconic woman who is just coming up against the really, really constrictive stereotypes of the 1950s in particular, you know, and then how, then how that affects her relationship with her daughters. You know, you can applaud Carol because she goes off and she finds her passion and she pursues it. You know, for every trailblazing woman out there, you want to applaud them, but then there are people they leave behind. And in the book, for the first time, I really focus on the people she leaves behind. Yeah, and there's it a lot of collateral damage there. Yeah, they are. They are there, the collateral damage. They are abandoned. Their mother doesn't want them, but she's stuck with them. When, and um, how that affects their choices for the rest of their lives you know one is the caretaker one is the planner but when she gets tired of that what happens to the more vulnerable sister who gets left behind and um so yeah that's definitely the heart of the book and like I said I, I've written about iconic women iconoclastic women in the past but you know we don't often talk about especially in this time period especially you know trailblazing women the people who get left behind the people who get forgotten and their hearts broken. Yeah. Mm. Powerful book. Wow. Yeah. Um, I want to touch upon because you 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 really do create this rich moment in history with all of the things. And we've alluded to the Beach Boys and the music, et cetera, but you go way beyond that. Your research is incredible. I mean, you're just sort of swimming in it, um, which is extraordinary and I've really enjoyed it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, how you, cause, cause I, cause you weren't alive in the very early sixties. <laughs> I was a baby <laughs> and I was not alive in the fifties. And that's funny. Cause a lot of my readers are very upset that this is labeled historical fiction because yeah, I, like, know. I remember this. Sorry, ladies. Gentlemen, it's like when your favorite songs on the oldies station it's oh, you know, know it's right? historical fiction you know yep. sorry <laughs> but um well certainly you know I knew the sunny part of it right the beach boys yeah. Gidget you know the beach party movies but um I, as a human I understood that there had to be a darker part of it you know what what lies beneath right and mm -hmm. so that's what I go looking for and mm -hmm. certainly, you know, uh, immediately the cultural appropriation struck me how, and surfing is, I just have to say surfing still has problems with racism and sex sexism. Female servers still don't get paid as much, you know, win as much as men. Um, there is still a very racist element to it, which is odd because this is a, a cultural thing that started in Polynesia and was taken to Hawaii by the ancient Polynesians in around 1000 AD when they rode over to settle the island. So, you know, I just started doing all that research to understand that and the history of it. And that's just the fun part, right? I read a lot of books. I read James Michener's Hawaii, which is, you know, mm -hmm. I know it's written by a white guy, but it's still a pretty, pretty Good. good, uh, you know, book about the history of Hawaii. Um, I searched, I subscribed to a thing called the Surf Network on, uh, on Amazon, and it is exactly what it sounds, or is it the Surf Channel? I think it's the Surf Channel. Uh, I don't surf. I was not going to learn how to surf to do this because I have a bad knee and I want to be around to write many more books. Um, but I just spent hours watching videos of people surfing and watching documentaries. And then I subscribed to a thing called the Encyclopedia of Surfing, okay. which is also a very exhaustive. Go and it goes back, you know, from the very first competitions in the 50s. It will tell you exactly what happened, who happened. And it'll show, you know, contemporary newspaper accounts of it and videos often. So I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I love California. My husband and I go to Newport Beach every year. We do a timeshare thing there. So, you know, the last couple of times I was there, I was certainly, you know, looking <laughs> at the surf, going, drove up to Malibu, went down to some of the surf museums that are around in that area. Um, so, yeah, I immersed myself in the culture. But then there is a point when I'm writing the book, you know, you immerse yourself in the research. 
mm -hmm. then there's a point where I have to let it go and fill in the blanks with my imagination. If I over research, and here's the thing, I spend far less time than most people think I do researching mm -hmm. a book. It's like I sketch it out. I mean, I, I, I read about it and then I just let it go and I let my imagination fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. So all the descriptions of how the women felt when they were writing in that perfect way, you know, that's my imagination. Sure. And, you know, the, the, the cultural parts of California, quite a lot of that stuff I knew, you know, just mm -hmm. because I'm a history nerd and I'm always reading histories. So some of that just is just part of my, you know, it's in my background. Well, Excellent. you do a beautiful job yeah. of it. And there is a lot. And this is one of those times, friends, <clears throat> when 10 minutes is just not adequate. So here's the thing. Melanie is going to be going on tour. And particularly if you are lucky enough to be in California, yeah. um, most of your events are pretty much after Labor Day. Right? Yeah, they're mostly starting around the week of the 13th of September. And I am going to be in California for 10 days up and down the coast. And even into Palm Springs. So yeah, if you live Southern California, Palm Springs, Northern California, there's a pretty good chance you'll have a, you'll have a chance to see me. So just go to my website and so, check out the details. And that in your website, just melaniebenjamin.com. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you can find, you should go and then you can ask all the questions we didn't have time <laughs> there to you ask go. in 10 yeah. minutes. And, and uh, you'll have time to read the book before I, I go on tour, which is weird. I've never had that happen before. It's just what happens I bet in it's going to make for good discussion, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a little different than normally I'm out there. You know, when you're on book tour, you're trying yeah. to get people to read the Day book. But this, this is a month after the book's out. Hopefully they will have already read it. So. It's going to be a good time, Super I'm sure. Fun. So Melanie, we have one more question to ask you before we regretfully say goodbye to you this morning. Melanie Benjamin, what is bringing you joy today? Well, um, well, it's book pub day, right? I mean, that's a joyful thing. You celebrate. It's my eighth historical novel. You know, that's that's I'm celebrating the accomplishments. But uh, my son texted me from Phoenix, one of my two uh, adult sons, and he's all over it. And you know, asking me where he can find the book, how he can tell his friends about it, can they, it. can they, you know, where can they talk about it on Instagram? And he was reading me some of the reviews from Amazon, <laughs> the good ones, and <laughs> and and he was just really supportive and and delightful and um that that's making me that's giving me joy today oh that is very and i didn't have to tell him about it that's the thing he that, remembers yeah that's something any mother could be excited about. <laughs> absolutely so, wonderful yeah. well congratulations uh california golden it's a tremendous book go get it friends and you know the other thing you should do is you should be back here on wednesday for more 10 minute book talk fun we'll see you next time friends bye Bye-bye.